Hi, this is Reverend Guy. Welcome to our service. We will be starting shortly. review 
uh, just a quick review of some of the scriptures that we looked at. Uh, the first one, uh, which we actually didn't read, but I do want to start here, is in Romans chapter 10. Now, let me say this um, uh, as you're turning to Romans chapter 10. Uh, the, y- you know, we as ministers and preachers and so on, um, we can say all that we want to say. But at the end of the day, and I'm saying this to you who are not preachers, who are not evangelists and so on, at the end of the day, it's got to be in line with God's word. If it's not in line with God's word, uh, then we need to understand that it's not gospel. Uh, and we, you often hear, you know, we say that I, that we say that the, the, uh, uh, we say, well, you know, what I just said is gospel, and that we say that to suggest that what we just said is true and and uh, and the likes. But if it's not in the Word of God, uh, then you have to take it with a grain of salt. Now, listen, that doesn't mean that because it's not in the Word of God, it can't be true. Uh, it doesn't mean that it can't be something valuable. For example, uh, I might say... Um, uh, oh, a perfect example is that expression many of you have heard, cleanliness is next to godliness. Now that sounds real religious, right? It sounds real re- real scriptural and all. It's not in the Bible. Uh, that's not, in the, but it's still good advice to be clean and to motivate your children and say, well, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. And so it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and yet it's not in the Bible. And so even though uh, we might um, say some things and we might uh, uh, make it sound, very often we'll make it sound like it's scripture, but if it's not in the word of God, we need to take it with a grain of salt. We should not uh, just, and here's the challenge. The challenge is that we as pastors uh, and ministers we tend to say some things with a, 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 a conviction uh, that makes the people who we're talking to believe that it's in the scriptures. Uh, and so, once again, uh, you might have heard some preachers say, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. And, and they say it with such vigor that you say, oh, that must be in the Bible. Uh, but it's not. And again, it's good news. It's, it, I mean, it's a positive thing and so on. But it's not in the scriptures, and because it's not in the scriptures, uh, uh, we must acknowledge that. Now, I'm saying that to say, on on occasion, I might even say something that is not in the scriptures, but I will tell you that this is not scripture. This is my thought, this is my, uh, uh, what I believe uh, is is whatever it is, but it's not in the scripture, and I'll make it clear. Uh, Having said that, uh, there are sometimes there are times when we'll say some things that are not uh, that are not uh, in the scriptures and are not good. Uh, I heard a preacher say, <laughs> "Oh my goodness!" I heard a preacher say that pregnant women shouldn't go outside after midnight. And I was talking to Sister Beverly, and she said she's heard that in times past too. Uh, she's heard it's a, it's it's what they call an old folks uh, folk tale or whatever however it's phrased. Um, yes. But but you see when we as preachers say that across the pulpit, we need to make sure that folk understand that that is not scripture. There are no demons on the outside uh, that come out at midnight and attack pregnant women. I've had I've been cussed out by some pregnant women at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Sister Barrow, I'll let it out before you burst. It's okay to talk. Uh, I feel better when you when you talk back to me. Every now and then, an amen or a giggle is fine with me. You can make you can choose which one. But but are you hearing me? I, I I've had and I've had some pregnant women just at, be as sweet and as kind at one o'clock in the morning. So uh, it's. I don't know where that came. Sister Beverly says she's heard it in her childhood that, you know, that that was just something that folks said. So uh, that's fine. But, but, but are you understanding? We need to, when we as preachers, we have the obligation 
uh, 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 and, and the charge uh, to preach God's word. And anything outside of that, if, it's, if we feel it's important for the people to know or whatever, fine, share it with them. But make sure that they understand that what you are telling them is not from the scriptures. It's something I believe. Uh, I, I believe that that you ought to, you know, uh, 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 keep your house clean, keep your room clean and stuff, because cleanliness is next to godliness. Uh, it, it's not, it, the, you won't find a scripture that says cleanliness is next to godliness, and you sure ain't going to find no scripture that says don't let pregnant women go out after midnight. But at the same rate, uh, it's important to keep in mind uh, that there are some things that may not be in the scriptures, but still are good for us. All right. Um, okay. So, having said that, uh, I told you to turn to Romans chapter ten. Romans okay. chapter ten, and we're going to start here because this is the scripture uh, when uh, the theme where we are, where we've been going since we started this noonday Bible study, is to first establish that the Word of God. That the Bible is the word of God, that it wasn't written by the white man or the black man or the green man. Uh, it wasn't uh, something that has been perverted over the years. This is God's word. And as I described it in times past, I said that uh, if you could imagine if you dictate a letter to someone and they write it down and they mail it out and they put the stamp on it and they address it, that's still not their letter. The letter came from whoever dictated it to them. Well, the Bible is the exact same way. God dictated these words to men who wrote them down. And so this is not Paul's word or, um, or Moses' word. Uh, this is God's word. Uh, those guys wrote it down, J Peter, James, John, uh, whoever it is, the prophets, uh, the scribes, they wrote it down. But the words themselves came from God. And we were looking at scriptures just to, uh, to understand and support uh, that fact. Uh, and so with that in mind, right. we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 10. This is a verse that uh, we're going to start reading. I'm going to start reading at verse 8. Uh, it says, but what does it say? The word is near you. Uh, and it is referring to uh, faith. Uh, it says, what does it say? It, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says you will be saved. And then it goes on to say, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture, and then it goes on to say, for the scripture, verse 11, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. You see, you have a lot of folk, uh, not just preachers, but just folk in general, that run around and try to uh, uh, make things sound like it's coming from God. Uh, mm -hmm. Even when we are encouraging people, uh, it can come across as if uh, uh, we are speaking uh, 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 scripture when what we are really doing is just saying words of encouragement. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but the scripture tells us, it says that in verse 11, it says, whoever believes in him, it says, for the scripture says. So even Paul, who Paul is the author, uh, 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 if you will, author. When I say author, I'm of course talking about the person that wrote it down, but, but it came from God. He is the author of, oh, I'd say about two-thirds of the New Testament. Uh, and in his, uh, in his writing uh, here in Romans, he says that he says, the scripture says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him, referring to Jesus Christ, will not be put to shame. Uh, and so Paul and all of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, 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 authors, if you will, they all acknowledge the scriptures. Now, 
the scriptures are what was written. I, I was telling Sister Beverly yesterday that back in these days, back in the days when Jesus walked the earth and, and Moses was around and so on and so forth, people, individuals, listen to me, individuals didn't have what we call a Bible. Mm. They, they, what they, they had the, the scriptures that were from the Old Testament. They had uh, uh, what was written, the, the Ten Commandments and those scriptures, those things from the Old Testament. When Jesus came, but, but those who had the scriptures were not the everyday common guy. Uh, uh, you and me, back in those days, would not have had the scrolls. They were held by the Jewish leaders and the Jewish leaders were the ones that read them and copied them by hand. And so remember, they didn't have Xerox machines back then. So they, every time they made a copy, if you will, somebody actually sat down and wrote, you. we can get a copy in three minutes uh, uh, if we wanted to uh, copy just this chapter that we read. It would take us two minutes to go to the machine. Back in those days, they would have had to sit down and rewrite it. With, uh, and they didn't even have a pen uh, as we understand it, they had to dip the oil, so, I mean, to dip the ink. So it would have taken them hours to just write one chapter that we have readily available to us. I'm saying that because we today have the benefit and the privilege of having the Word of God right here with us. We have the benefit and the privilege. You having a problem, sis? Uh, Okay. You, you left me, but you came back. You froze for a quick minute. Yeah, that's going to happen because, again, the speed that we have here is not right. like the speed in New York. So we just got to kind of suffer through that, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but what I was saying is that uh, we they didn't have the scriptures back then. We have, but they referenced the scriptures. And uh, th there's a passage of scripture that says, your word, thy word, your word, Lord, I have hid in my heart. Yeah, they had to hide it in their heart because they didn't have it physically to walk around with it. So when they heard it, they had to, uh, as, as you understand, uh, 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 memorize it, so to speak, in their heart and in their mind. And it is with that. But today we have the scriptures and we can, and I've, I've told uh, 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 the church in times past, don't ever, you need to have your own Bible. You need to have your own special Bible that where the letters are big enough that you can read it and something that's not too heavy that you could carry it when you go around and so on and so forth. But, but I want you to know something and I want you to get this in your mind. Don't ever buy, I, I, they have some beautiful ones, leather bound and the gold uh, trim and, and the red letter. The, I, I encourage you to get one with the red letters. Red letters is is where Jesus, I guess you can't really see it there, but where Jesus speaks, they put it in red, and most of you are familiar with that. But it is vital that you never ever buy a Bible that is so expensive that you don't want to write in it, because that defeats the whole purpose. Uh, if you're like me, first of all, we're grateful that we have the physical Bible that we can read, but just as importantly, when we read a verse, that speaks to our spirit, we need to have a highlighter and highlight that verse in the Bible. But if you buy it, you say, oh no, I spent uh, you know, $150 for the I ain't writing on it, and I, I'm not even gonna take it to church because I don't want nothing to happen. No, then don't buy that Bible. The whole idea is for us to have this word uh, that we can have and use and read at any given moment. Uh, the scripture here, uh, and the reason why we read it, uh, was simply to show that even Paul in the New Testament referenced the scriptures. And we'll see some other scriptures just like that. But if you look in, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, if you turn, yes, to Ephesians, to Ephesians, that's in the New Testament, a couple of books after Romans. Uh, and for those that may be on the job or something, you can just write these scriptures down and you can look at them later. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, in Ephesians chapter 6, many of you have heard, uh, most of these scriptures you have heard uh, before if you've uh, spent any time in the church. 
this passage of scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, this is the scripture that talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Many of you have heard that before. Uh, I'm going to read just a little bit from the top just to recollect. It says, put on, uh, just to bring it back to your, remem uh, to your memory, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities. So you've heard that passage. I'm sure that sounds familiar. That it goes on to say, uh, therefore, take up the whole armor. Uh, it says, stand, therefore, having gird your waist with truth and uh, put on the breastplate of righteousness and so on. So I'm sure that many of you have heard that uh, before. What I want to do is jump down to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. Because in those two verses, it says, uh, and by the way, Paul is also the writer of this book in Ephesians. He's writing to the church, to the church at Ephesus. This is not a personal letter. The, he's writing it to the church in the city of, uh, of Ephesus, and the people are called Ephesians, hence the name. So he says, take the helmet of salvation, and then listen, he says, and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god god's word it tells us in another passage is like a two-edged sword and paul tells us to when we are girding up ourselves when we are preparing ourselves to uh, uh to grow in the lord one of the key things we need obviously is salvation the helmet of uh, the, the helmet of salvation of salvation but he says Take the word of the uh, the sword the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is not just uh, 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 something that we is nice to have. It is vital for our spiritual growth. And let me tell you something about a sword. If you remember, if you can imagine it in your mind, a shield is a defensive uh, uh, is a defensive weapon, right? A field stops you from getting hit so to speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, the helmet is a defensive weapon. It protects you from getting hit. But the, the sword, if you think about it, just a regular sword, a sword is both a defensive and an offensive weapon. In other words, you can use a sword to stop you from getting hit, but you can also use it to hit someone else, right? The so, so that makes it both defensive and offensive. Uh, you can, uh, and so the word of God that he says, uh, Paul says here in verse 17, he says, take the helmet of salvation, and he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the idea and the purpose is that because the word of God is all we have to stand on. In our very first Bible study, uh, I told you uh, that uh, what we really, in, we we have to have faith and uh, we have to believe God and believe the word of God. But when we really stop and look at it closely, as long as we believe that the Bible is the word of God, everything else we could technically say, I don't believe it, I know it. And when asked, well, how do you know? The answer is because it's in the word of God. Do you see what I mean? So we don't have to... And, and that is the thing that we have to believe. They say, well, how do you know that, that, that the word of God is true? Well, by faith I know it. But how do I know that Jesus walked on water? Oh, I don't have to believe that. I know it. Well, how do you know it? Because it's in the word of God. You see what I mean? So we can say we know it because it's in the word of God. But about the word of God itself, we have to say, I believe it, right? We have to be. And so really our faith has got to be in the word of God. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to, listen, understand it all. That's why God gave us pastors and teachers, to help us to understand it. But listen, you don't have to understand something to believe it. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, uh, the, the, the lights. Uh, well, a perfect example. Listen, the chapel in behind me. The chapel behind me uh, is actually not really behind me. The miracle of technology allows me to be down here. We're in Virginia, 
and yeah. have it look like I'm standing in the chapel. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. how is that possible? Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know how th that works. I, all I know is I pressed a couple of buttons and I did this. And, and so I don't know. I don't understand how I'm able to do this. But I, but obviously it's, you, the, it. you see, yeah. so it's the same exact thing with the word of God. We don't have to understand everything. Now, listen, if I take the time to investigate and research how green screens work and how the technology, then I can understand how this is done, right? Uh, uh, but, uh, and it's the same thing with the word of God. I don't understand it. But if I take the time to learn, then I can uh, uh, gain an understanding. Yeah. And the Word of God tells us uh, that if we, uh, we should probably look at this. Uh, it is in, uh, um, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it's in, I think it's in Jeremiah. Uh, I think it's in Jeremiah, and I want to say around chapter 5-ish, or better, chapter, is that 5? No, chapter 3. Jeremiah, chapter 3. Now again, uh, oh, everything that I'm sharing with you is in the Word of God. So uh, you don't have to say, well, I, uh, uh, and I never want anyone to say, well, Reverend Guy said this. No, what I want you to say is, uh, Reverend Guy might have said it, but I know it's true. Well, how do you know? Because I saw it in my Bible. I saw it in the Word of God. And so even if Reverend Guy didn't say it, he just pointed me to it, but I read it. And, so, and listen, and nobody should feel uncomfortable. There are folks that have good memories. I'm not one of them. Uh, there are folks that can uh, see something and remember it, and, and it just, it's burned in their memory. That's not my yeah. testimony. I got to write stuff down. I got to highlight stuff. And then I got to have my wife remind me of what I wrote down and where I put it once I wrote it down. So at the end of the day, you don't have to feel bad if you can't remember where it is. But as long as you can say in your heart, no, I read it. I know it's there because I read it. And so I don't have to, they say, well, find it for me. Show it to me in the Bible and then I'll believe it. No, no, no. I don't, I, my mind is not able to remember where it is. I know I saw it and that's good enough for me, right? So you need to have that same confidence. And this is why I'm sharing these scriptures. I say go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. If you look in Jeremiah chapter 3, uh, it's, I'm reading just one verse, and I've told you guys before, I, t I tell you all the time, uh, you can jot these down, but read, uh, uh, you know, the verses before and read the verses after. That way you can ensure that what I'm saying and what other folks preach and see is in context, okay? Uh, so I'm just reading the one verse in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. It says, uh, and this is the Lord speaking. He says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's in the New King James. In the King James Version, it says, I will give you pastors according to mine own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. The point being that what this is why God has blessed you with pastors and teachers so that they can help you to understand. Just like I was saying earlier, that's why God blessed us with uh, books and, and internet research yeah. so that I can understand how a green screen works. Well, God has given us pastors and teachers uh, uh, so that we can learn and understand his word. And so with that said, uh, let's move on because I, again, I want us to, to see now, I gave you these scriptures uh, in our last Bible study. You don't have to turn to them. You can just make sure you have them written down. But I'm going to turn to them and read them uh, uh, so that we can have it uh, for those that are just joining us. The first one is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now let me tell you something. 2 Timothy 
is a letter written from Paul, the Apostle Paul, to Timothy. This was not written to a church. It was written to a person. Timothy was Paul's uh, apprentice, if you will. Uh, he, uh, uh, a mentor even. Uh, Timothy uh, was a young minister. Uh, Paul took him under his wing and kind of taught him and groomed him. And so in this second letter to Timothy, he's encouraging him and he's telling him, I'm going to be reading 2 Timothy chapter 3. You know what? I'm going to start at verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 14. And I'm going to read down to verse 17. All right? It says here, Paul is right. Remember, Paul is writing to Timothy. He says, remember them of, uh, I'm sorry, remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord. And he's, when he says remind them, he's talking to Timothy, who was a young pastor. And he's saying, remind your people, remind your congregation, remind those in your community and so on. So he says, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to stri not to strive about word uh, not to strive about words to no profit to the ruining of the hearers be diligent to present yourselves approved the king james says study to show thyself approved it says unto god a worker a, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of God. It says, sh uh, uh, show yourself approved, study, be diligent to present yourself approved, not to man, but to God. This is why I told you, don't worry if you can't memorize scriptures and somebody asks you, well, show it to me. If you can't show it to me, listen, I know it in my heart. It's written in my heart. So I'm not, the fact that I can't remember where it is in the Bible is irrelevant. But listen, above all, never say to somebody, but Reverend so-and-so said it. Well, so and Reverend Pastor so and so said it. Uh, Bishop so and so said it. Do, read it, know it, understand it for yourself. Because God, as I said earlier, He's blessed us to be able to have the Word of God right in our own homes now. So we, it's inexcusable. He says, "Be diligent to show yourself approved to God, uh, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth." Then it goes on to say in verse sixteen. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, it, it, what the scripture, what Paul is telling uh, Timothy here, he's saying, uh, don't allow, tell your people to avoid at all costs any, what he says, profane and idle babblings. I would consider uh, old wise tales as idle babbling. Uh, I, I think that there are some things that we say and we want to encourage. I think uh, 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 when we say, like we were talking earlier, to say to somebody, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, mm -hmm. that's, you're encouraging them to be, uh, you know, to be neat and to be clean and, and I'm okay with that. But the only other example, like I said, when you say that pregnant women shouldn't go out after midnight, that's just vain babbling. Are you hearing me? That, that's just, yeah. that's just vain. It is not substantiated by the scriptures, but when it comes from a, from a pastor, and this is why Paul is telling Timothy, don't do that. Stick to the word of God. And it says, I think we read it, yeah, we read it up in verse, mm -hmm. uh, chapter, th oh no, I, I'm going to skip down, I'm going to jump over, same words, I don't know, uh, I, I want to, Second Timothy chapter 3, yeah, I want to go over to Second Timothy chapter 3, uh, where it says in verse 14, it says here, but you, and this is still Paul talking to the young pastor Timothy, 
uh, he says, uh, but you must continue in the things which you, referring to Timothy, have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Uh, and then he says that, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which, you, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, the, Paul tells uh, Timothy, he says, you were brought up in the word. You weren't brought up in fables. You weren't brought up uh, in just uh, idle uh, uh, chatter and vain, what is it called? Vain babbling, uh, you, uh, profane and idle babbling. The, you, were brought, you were brought up with the word. You were brought up under teaching and under preaching uh, that uh, came from God's word. He says, Paul tells Timothy, so continue in that way. Don't be, uh, don't allow yourself uh, to be swayed or misdirected by uh, these types of things, these outside forces. And he says, uh, and remember from whom you learn them. You see, uh, it is important for us at me, I'm talking about me, pastors and bishops and, and preachers and evangelists, it's important for us to live with integrity. Because as, and, and we are just men and women, just like everybody else, and we have our own challenges. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we've got to try extra hard or super hard uh, uh, to live with integrity. Because what will happen, as I'm sure many of you uh, can attest to, is that if we fall and if we slip and if we mess up, the, the people that we are ministering to will become devastated. They will see, uh, let me give you an example. If I were to, I'm, uh, as some of you know, I'm married. Uh, I, I have a beautiful, lovely, wonderful wife. Uh, if I were to cheat on my wife, uh, the fact of the matter is it would devastate those who saw me as their pastor or saw me as a leader. It would devastate them. It would make them sad and it would make them troubled. And, and it would make them question all the ministry that I've done over the years. Do you see that? So this is what Paul is encouraging Timothy, uh, saying to him, uh, you remember from whom you were taught and the things that you were taught and live in those things. Uh, you're going to have your trials, Timothy. You're going to have your trials, Reverend Guy. Uh, uh, but you've got to push past them for the sake of those who are looking to you as their leader, as their pastor, as their spiritual leader, as their pastor, as their uh, teacher. And so it is vital. There's another passage in another place that says that we as ministers are going to be charged or going to be scrutinized more strictly than the average person because we've been given the charge and the privilege to teach God's word. Well, we better try our best to live according to it. All right. And so uh, let's move on. Uh, the, the, the scripture that we just read, uh, if you keep going, we read it the last time. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God uh, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it refers to, it's talking about the word, of, uh, the holy scriptures. This is will this is the only thing that we can stand on listen there are people that will say uh, I've had people say uh, uh, preachers um, that I've heard tell uh, the ch tell their church or tell the congregation that if they put their Bible under their pillow they'll have a good night's sleep that's I just heard. ridiculous yeah. yeah and it sounds like that you say well yeah because it's the word of God and I want to be close to God and so uh, yeah I could put up that's just a lie. The only thing that you'll get uh, uh, if you put your Bible under your pillow, it depends on how big your Bible is, is a stiff neck. The, at the end of the day, we cannot, I don't even know what the motivation of something like that is. I, I, I just, it just, it's just ridiculous. And as horrible as it might be, um, there are people that are gullible and they say, they, they try to use logic and they say, well, that makes sense. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll try it. No, the, 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 what the Bible tells us, and we should, uh, let's go ahead and look at, at, at that scripture. It's in, um, let's look at Psalms chapter, 
Psalms chapter uh, chapter one nineteen. Psalms chapter one hundred and nineteen. Psalms is going to be about in the middle of your Bible, uh, uh, and we're going to look at chapter one nineteen. And just one verse here. It says, uh, Psalms chapter 119, verse 105. Verse 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God is, all, is everything what, that we need. Uh, it's, it is a light. It says it is a, a lamp to our feet. For in this world, the concept is we walk in darkness, right? Uh, because we're in, but the word of God is a light to our feet, a spiritual light to our spiritual feet. It is a light to our feet, a, a, a lamp to our feet and a light to my path. Uh, it, it guides us. And listen, the, the truth is uh, we don't always like uh, uh, the roads that we have to travel. But with God's word and standing on God's word, uh, it, we can get through it by holding on. And we say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. We can do it if we just continue to press forward, knowing that God's word says whatever it might be. Uh, uh, it, the, God's word tells us uh, to be, uh, as an example, it says, be uh, steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because your labor is not in vain. Well, when we go through some situations and it's troubling and it's heartbreak, heartbreaking and so on, but we keep pressing because because the word of God says, no, don't give up. Uh, 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 be steadfast and unmovable, knowing that your labor, which is in the Lord, will not be in vain. Don't stop praying for your kids. As bad and as ornery and as wayward as they might go be, uh, uh, or, or, or your parents, or your grandchildren, whatever, or your neighbor, uh, or the, the, the person that you work with on the job, whoever it might be, and you, you get frustrated because you feel like, well, you know, I'm, I'm praying for them, I'm praying, but I'm not seeing any change. Be steadfast. And you say, well, why be steadfast? Because God's word tells me to do. That's the light, you see? That's the lamp to my feet. I, I'm, say, I'm getting frustrated. I'm just going to give up. No, the scripture says, no, uh, uh, be steadfast, be unmovable. Keep doing it. Even though, keep working for the Lord, keep pressing, even though things get frustrating and you feel like this is just not worth the effort. No, keep, uh, keep pressing on. Why? Because the word of God tells us to do so. And, and let me show you something that is so incredible about, to show you what God thinks about his own word. Stay in Psalms, but go to chapter 138. When I read this scripture, you know, several years ago, it just kind of, it jumped out at me and it just kind of blew my mind. Uh, we're looking at Psalms chapter 138 and one verse here, and that is verse 2. I'll read verse 1 as well, uh, but it's verse 2 that we really want to look at. It says, I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods, lowercase g, before the gods, I will sing praise to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Then it says, for you, God, for you have magnified your word above all your name. Well, if you really ponder that and look at the scripture, what David is saying, and again, God dictating to David what to write down, he's saying that you, God, have magnified your word above your name. In other words, God is saying, look, my name is holy, and you are to, uh, he says, uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall, uh, 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 the, 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 the my name should be holy when we pray, say, uh, uh, hallowed be thy name when we pray, hallowed and reverenced and, 
and uh, uh, blessed and, and, and uh, exalted be your name. But God himself says, yeah, that's all right and that's all true and you need to do all those things. But God's word says, but understand something. I have magnified you, God, uh, have magnified your name above, uh, your word above your name. So God is saying, listen, if my word is no good, my name is no good. So I magnify my name above my word so that you and you and you and me will know uh, that if God said it, you can believe it. You don't have to doubt it. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, what's this phrase, bet the bank on it or uh, the, bet the farm on it or something like that. The, but the point being that, if it, that God himself holds his word above his name. And so if he considers his word that, uh, that high, that holy, that righteous, then we ought to do the same thing. Again, it doesn't mean that we have to or that we will understand it all, but it is just that we ought to have it and know it uh, in our hearts so that when we run into our own individual situations, we can stand not only on the name of God, but on the word of God. And that is so vital in our Christian walk. Let's look at uh, one last scripture, I think, uh, uh, one last passage, uh, which is found in Matthew. Uh, let's see. Matthew chapter 4. Yeah, Matthew. Uh -huh. Well, we're going to look at a couple of other things. But Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Now, this in where, where we're going, Matthew uh, chapter 4, this is the early part of Jesus' ministry. In fact, he hasn't even uh, uh, started any real, uh, 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 like, any real, um, like, miracles and that type of thing. This is the beginning of his, of his, uh, of his ministry here on earth. Uh, and let me just say something about that. We know that Jesus was born through the virgin birth and so on. But he didn't actually start his ministry until, about until he was about 30 years old. The scriptures don't give us a whole lot of information at all about his life between birth and 30. There is a little bit when he was 12, a situation took place. Uh, but basically, uh, and that situation was when... Uh, his family had gone and he stayed where he was in Jerusalem and they came back and you remember the phrase, uh, didn't you know I have to be about my father's business? You may have heard that phrase before. That was the situation that happened. But there's very little. That's pretty much all there is in the scriptures about Jesus' life between birth and 30. But one of the first things that happened when Jesus began his ministry was is found here in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to start reading from verse 1 down to verse uh, I'll, I'll see. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It's important to us to, for us to see. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, led Jesus into the wilderness, and then he, it doesn't say he led him into the wilderness and then the devil came and did it. He, the Bible says that the Spirit led him into the wilderness for the express purpose of being tempted. That's what it says. Uh, then Jesus, I'm reading it again and I'll keep going. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It goes on to say, and when he, Jesus, had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. And listen to what Jesus said. And he answered and said, it is written. It is written. What does that mean? It is written. It is written in the word of God. So Jesus is quoting scripture and he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus uses the Bible. Remember I said the word of God is an offensive and a defensive weapon? Jesus uses the word of God uh, to defend against 
the, the enemy's temptations. He says, it is written. Okay, so then it says in verse 5 that the devil took him up into the holy city and set, took Jesus up into the holy city and set him on, a, on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, jump off this building. And then Satan quotes scripture. Satan says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So Satan himself knows the word, and he uses it, but obviously not for the right reason. But Satan, So this is why we need to understand that everybody that stands behind the, pul the pulpit uh, uh, may not be a, a God-led, uh, a spirit-led uh, person, man or woman, the fact of the matter is because we see here that Satan himself quotes scripture. But look at what happened. Uh, he, uh, Satan quoted the scripture and then Jesus said to him, it is written again. Or in other words, listen, notice Jesus didn't say, no, you misquoted that scripture. No, he didn't misquote it. He used it uh, out of context, but he didn't misquote it. So Jesus says to Satan, he says, yeah, well, yeah but, 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 but it is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Well, what happens after that, it says in verse 8 that the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain. By the way, Satan was, was trying to quote scripture to get Jesus to jump off of the, <laughs> to get Jesus to jump off the top of a building. So clearly that was ill-motivated. In verse 8, again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he, Satan, said to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. And look at what he says once again for the third time. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall, uh, uh, you shall serve. And the Bible says, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The, the fact is, Satan came to attack Jesus, to tempt him three times. And notice in that scripture, Matthew chapter 4, he says, Jesus says three times, it is written, it is written, it is written. And what is he referring to? It is written in the word of God. It is written in the word of God. It is written in the word of God. Jesus uses the word of God as both a, uh, a, 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 a as a sword for both defensive purposes and in that last one, offensive. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Kind of jabs at him and says, get behind me, get away from me. Uh, with the word of he said, and but he didn't say because because you know I, 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 uh, because you're no good, because you're this or that. No, he says, the word of God, it is written. And so we see how important how vital it is for us to have the word of God uh, and understand it. And Jesus stood on the word of God. He didn't say some preacher told me. He said it is written. And therefore, we've got to get that scripture in our hearts uh, uh, and get the scriptures in our heart and stand on it. Like I said, we may not be able to quote it. Uh, we may not be able to uh, remember where we saw it, but it is so important that we read it for ourselves so that you never, ever, ever, and if you do it now, try your very best to get out of the practice of saying, well, my pastor said, or I heard this preacher say, or this reverend, no, uh, read it for yourself so that you can be confident as Jesus was and say, just as Jesus said, it is written, and therefore I can stand on it, I believe it, because God said it, uh, uh, and, and therefore, uh, I know it's right. And how do I know God said it? Because it is written. Uh, how do I know I'm going to heaven? Because it is written. How do I know that if you don't love Jesus, you're going to hell? Because it is written. Uh, 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 how do I know that I can be healed? Because it is written. How do I know that I can be delivered? Because it is written. How do I know he's never going to leave me? Uh, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Why? Because it is written. Even though you hear preachers say it, but you need to get it in your heart so that you can have the confidence of knowing that it is written. And at the end of the day, you don't have to, and, and if I, they say, well, where is it? I don't, I don't remember. 
but I know I read it, and therefore it is, I know I read it, I know I read it, and I know I understood it, and I know I, 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 I may not quote it exactly, but the theme and the, uh, the thrust of whatever it was is in the Word of God. It is written. And so with that, we're going to close here. Uh, we thank God for everyone that has joined us on both, uh, on all the different platforms. Uh, we, uh, we, this is, uh, as I've told you guys before, this is not in place of our Monday night Bible study. We'll be back tonight at 7 o'clock with our, uh, our, our, uh, uh, our uh, 7 o'clock, our evening Bible study. It's a t completely different uh, topic, uh, different uh, 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 lessons uh, in the evening and in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, we thank God that he's allowed us to have this additional Bible study. Uh, for those who are not able uh, to be with us in the evening. God is good. Uh, I thank everyone uh, that, uh, that sent out uh, cards and, and gifts and, and well wishes. Uh, I, I, uh, I celebrated, for those that may not know, my 20th pastoral anniversary was yesterday. I've been pastoring for 20 years. Uh, I've been in the ministry, obviously, longer than that, much longer than that. But, uh, but I began pastoring uh, victory. Uh, uh, Victory Christian Tabernacle at uh, 20 years ago. I began pastoring Galilee Baptist Church 10 years ago, so uh, so it's a double uh, uh, a blessing that I celebrated yesterday, and thank you all again for uh, for your support and for being with me. Um, we're going to we're going to stop here, and uh, I will uh, hopefully um, God will bless us that we can be back. Uh, we start at seven o'clock on Monday evening, so. Uh, we thank God. We look forward to that. And then we look forward to seeing you guys uh, uh, back next Monday uh, for our Bible study and, of course, our worship service. You can look on our website to get all the details of our services and the times that they start and so on. So with that said, let's bow our heads and we will uh, we'll see you next time. God, we thank you and we praise you because you are a good God. Uh, Lord, it is so vital and important for me to know, for us to know and understand your It is so vital for us to get it in our hearts so that when we are faced with the, uh, with the Satan's temptations and, and with folks trying to uh, confuse us and, and trying to uh, steer us away from you, we can say with confidence, not that Pastor Guy said something, not that so and so said, but it is written in your word. God, we are. Uh, Thank you.